Simon Holmes Accord is standing by, one of the big backers of the Teal uh, candidates. Where are you actually, Simon? I can see you're at a party, but I don't know exactly where you are. <laughs> I'm, I'm here at the Auburn Hotel uh, in Hawthorne, which is in the middle, middle of Kuyong. Oh, Mr Holmes Accord, it's Middle Annabelle Kuyong, and it's about... <laughs> <laughs> OK, Simon Holmes Accord, this is... Pretty over this crowd. It is, really. Um, this is Annabelle Crabb, and I, you know, you know, Anthony Green hasn't quite called Kuyong, but it looks like a majority of the tear lights behind you have. <laughs> now, what have you done to the Liberal Party in Melbourne tonight? Sorry, can you say that again? I'm just asking, what have you done to the Liberal Party in Melbourne tonight? Because it's starting to look as though you've kind of gutted its most fancy yeah, bits. Yeah, look, I wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to talk above the crowd. Look, I wouldn't... <laughs> Everyone's been asked to be quiet. Look, this community independence movement is, is incredible. You've seen it uh, initially rise up in... Uh, Kathy McGowan's seat of Indi, passed over to Helen Haynes and then Warringah. Uh, and then this election, 23 independents uh, running in these community-backed campaigns. Uh, two of the strongest in the country were Goldstein and Kuyong. This campaign's been amazing. There's 2,000 volunteers and they have knocked on every knockable door in the electorate. 55,000 doors knocked, which I think is the highest number, certainly this century, maybe ever, of doors knocked in an electorate. It's been such a strong campaign. We spoke to Tim Wilson um, a little bit earlier before it was confirmed that his seat had fallen. He said that this was a, uh, an orchestrated attack on the Liberal Party. Um, and to be fair, the removal of a lot of moderate voices from the Liberal Party is going to change the shape and orientation of that grouping. How do you think that your new grouping can account Look, for that? Well, firstly, it's not my grouping. I really want to make that clear. But secondly, I think what we're seeing here is that the communities have seen through the fake moderates. These people that have lost their seats tonight weren't true moderates. They voted with Barnaby Joyce every time on climate. They voted with Barnaby Joyce every time on integrity. These, these, uh, these uh, MPs that have lost, the, or ex-MPs, I guess, who have lost their seats, uh, they've been seen through as fake moderates in electorates that want moderate politicians. Well, I mean, fake or not, I mean, the Liberal Party is running desperately short of them now, so do you think that that's going to push the Liberal Party and the Coalition generally to the right? And what does that do for politics in Australia? No, I don't... Th this, is, this, is not, this is not pushing the Coalition to the right. The Coalition went to the right. Howard, Howard kicked out most of the moderates and Abbott and Morrison kicked out the rest. There, there are barely any moderates left, and I reject the claim that any of those who've lost their seats tonight are moderate. The reason these part these these uh, that the Liberal Party has lost these seats uh, is because they left a great vacuum, and these candidates have filled that vacuum. Simon Andrew Probin here. You say it's not your grouping. What what role will you have from here on, or, or sim have you simply brought them to the school door and let them let them blossom? Andrew, I, re I, I, I reject that. So Clim Climate 200 hasn't run these campaigns. We didn't start these campaigns. We haven't run these campaigns. In fact, we're a minority funder of these campaigns. Here I am in Kuyong. They've raised $1.1 million, uh, I think maybe even $1.2 from the community, with uh, Climate 200 having given uh, less than half of that, so less than a third of their total fundraising. And you see the same thing again in Goldstein, Wentworth, North Sydney... Uh, it's it's uh, a common story around the place that these campaigns are... You know, they started in the community, they're genuine community campaigns. Uh, we just gave them a kick to level the playing field so they'd have a fighting chance uh, against the party machines. So what is your ongoing role um, with this grouping, which you don't possess or command, but what is your ongoing relationship with this political grouping, which is obviously going to be hugely potent in the shape of this next parliament? Yeah. So my, my personal involvement, so I'm, I'm, I'm only about 2% of the funding of Climate 200. Uh, there's 12,000, uh, sorry, 11,200 donors to Climate 200 from 151 electorates, every single electorate in the country. A third of our donors are rural and regional. So this is a, this is a broad uh, crowdfunding movement that has helped to level the playing field. My personal in involvement, um, well, we, Climate 200 gave our last donation about two weeks ago uh, to the community independents, uh, and that's, that's, the end of our, that's the end of our involvement with them. But certainly, uh, this community independent movement 
I think has got, you've, you've seen tonight, it's got legs. Wouldn't be surprised if there are many more next time and Climate 200 will be there to help them uh, when we come into the next election. Well, Simon Holmes Court, the recent Australian political history is littered with examples of billionaires who sprayed around a lot of money to achieve not much and I don't think anyone could say that of you tonight. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thanks a lot.